on the menu today, Professor. Ah, just a few deliveries. A few or a lot. I'll take whatever. Good man. Carrier with a letter for you? Excellent, thank you. Oh, very interesting. This is not quite the news I expected, but welcome nonetheless. What's that, ma'am? 
Forgive me if I'm not at liberty to say. As a carrier, I'm sure you of all people understand the value of information. Yes, yeah, certainly. The Guild has its network, but we overseers, I would say we are more like spiders. We crisscross the city with our webs and take notice when we feel a tug on this thread or that. I see. I'm sure you do. And yes, we occasionally feed upon the poor flies caught in our web, but we're just as likely to give them a treat as well. To keep our web strong, of course. Of course. So, perhaps I won't share the tidbit that got caught on my web this time, but I will reward the fly who tugged on the thread and called it to my attention. Make sure my little fly is rewarded. And there's a little morsel for you as well. Just run off like that, Henny. Granny's not as spry as she once was. Well, Henny, I'm not... Aren't you cold, darling? You never knew how to dress appropriately. <laughs> I remember back in preschool how you would put your undies on your head. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think you're mistaking me for somebody. <sighs> it's about time you made it back here, Henny. I'm feeling a bit out of sorts today. Why am I even standing here? Aha! Did you get... Do, do you have those, uh, you know... Help me out here, Henny. I'm sorry. I'm Aiden. Aiden. And I really have to get going. Pills. That's it. You were supposed to bring me my pills. Run out this morning. And my mind's all sort of foggy. I'd like to help, but I... Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I'm sorry, Grandma. I forgot to pick up your pills. Can you remind me which pharmacy I have to go to? God, I've forgotten everything. Ah, I know. This group of nice boys came this morning for coffee. No, it was for tea. And they made me, I mean... I lent them my last bottle. They had such funny masks on their faces. You were robbed by renegades? Ah, yes. That might be what they called themselves. But they were nice boys. All right, don't worry, Grandma. I'll ask those boys to give it back. Where did they go after that? Uh, somewhere over there. To those abandoned apartments behind me, I guess. Darling. Don't you boys get up to too much mischief together. I'll be waiting with a hot cup of tea by the windmill south of the VNC Tower.
<laughs> so they are here. Grandma might be confused, but her memory's just fine for some things. I hope these pills help her. Here you go, ma'am. I mean, Grandma, I got your pills. Took your sweet time, Jerry. Mm hmm. Had to grab a pint with your mates after work again, is that it? You could have let me know before we got married. The day were your true loves. <laughs> well, here's your tea. See what kind of wife you have? Oh, the best kind. And after a hard day's work, a pint with the guys is a pardonable offense, isn't it? Take this, darling. You'll feel better. That's so sweet you brought them, Aiden. Wait, 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 wait. So you remember my name? You know who I am? I... Oh, my. Oh, all right. Mm. I might have exaggerated my memory problems a little bit. One can get used to this epidemic, even to the infected. But to loneliness? Never. What's the point of surviving if I have no one to share my life with? And you. Do you have a grandmother still alive? Do you drop by for tea with her? Never had a grandma. Truly? Then you do not even know what you are missing. I know so many stories. Would you like to listen? I... I'd love to. Drop by whenever you feel like it, and I'll be glad to tell you. In the streets at night? Damn. People bring hurt on themselves when they ask too much from life. Life is so very much... well... Lively. Carrier's Guild, here's a package for you. Oh my, I've been waiting for this. The new issue of Flickr Fanfare magazine. What's that? The best source for behind the scenes info on your favorite movies, their stars and directors. Oh look, it says here that Lana Kasdan has a new film coming out and that Eggie Canby's performance in the Quigley is a tour de force. Uh, what's a movie? 
<laughs> you know if you read Flicker Fanfare, my friend. I used to read them slavishly when I was younger. I recently found someone with a complete collection. I pay him to send me an issue a month. I feel like I'm back in the old days when movies were being made and magazine subscriptions were in vogue. I see. Interesting. Forgive my pathetic nostalgia, but the arrival of these rags, and yes, they were rags even then, well, it takes me back. They're a monthly oasis from the pervasive drear around us. I can't argue with you there. So don't. Now, leave me. It says that Teddy Canterbury is having an affair with his leading lady, and he's married to a man. Oh, I swear the cat is just insatiable. In one piece, I see. Of course. Uh, here's a message I was given. I'll take care of that. Now get your ass back here soon. These messages aren't going to deliver themselves. I'm restless, Professor. I need something to do. I got some deliveries for you. Sweet. Just watch yourself. There's something in the air. Like what? I can't put my finger on it. But watch your back. I have a letter for you. Oh, look at this envelope, Berto. So pretty. I bet it's a wedding invitation. God, I hope not. My tux rotted away years ago. How oh, hush. Yep, it's a wedding. And can you believe it? Garrett, you know him. Of course I do. What's he getting married for? That kid's played women like a loose game of three-card Monty for a while now. Stop. It's some girl named Cordelia. Cordelia? <laughs> I remember her from somewhere. You asked me, that girl was selling not so much goods, but plenty of services, if you know what I mean. Oh, you're terrible. I'm sure she's very sweet and they'll make a great couple. If you say so. But I don't want to go to their wedding. That marriage will be over in a month. 
Besides, my tux rotted away years ago. Oh, don't you worry. It's an announcement, not an invitation. Oh, so they're just rubbing our noses in their so-called love. Well, I can live with that. It means we don't have to buy gifts. Besides, my tux. Oh, will you just please shut up about your tux? <laughs> Carrier's Guild here with a letter. Thank you so much, son. So kind of you to bring it. Of course, ma'am. Happy to be a... F I don't get much in the way of visitors. I'm sorry to... How's the bazaar these days? Still bustling? Oh, how it smelled. Some thought it rank, but not me. It's been so long. Well, at least you have people writing to you. To tell you stories of the world outside your flat. Yes, yes. I'm a lucky woman at that. <laughs> Listen to me bending your ear. Forgive an old woman. I'll let you go. No trouble at all, ma'am. How's Mrs. Krasinski today, Carrier? She seemed fine, I guess. Why? Oh, I'm just wondering. She's all alone. Got no one. I worry about her. Well, I, I just delivered a letter, so she must have someone. Well, not really. I mean, I talk to her, but I also send those letters for her. The only other people she gets to talk to are you carriers. I had no idea. Uh, you're not supposed to, but I've been thinking lately. If something happens to me, who's gonna look in on Mrs. Krasinski? Well, she's so alone. I just thought you should know. Thanks. Aiden, we have a situation. What's going on? Another ambush. This time it's Jack. He just radioed an SOS. Oh, shit. Look, I know you guys don't get along, but... It doesn't matter. Just tell me where he is. I'm sending you the coordinates. Okay, I'm on it. If he calls again, tell him I'm on my way.
I'm here. There's no sign of Jack. Not even much of a struggle. Knock on some doors. See if anyone heard or saw anything. There's a family nearby. Who is it? What do you want? I'm from the Carrier's Guild. I need your help. What kind of help? A fellow Carrier was attacked nearby. Did you hear or see anything? Yes, I saw something. What I saw convinced me that it's death for me to tell another soul. You have nothing to fear. The Carrier's Guild will protect you. Can you? You want to protect us? Try clearing this floor of the infected. You know what it's like to live in a dark zone when monsters are lurking outside your front door all the time? My family and I are in enough danger without you added to our worries. So leave me be. Ask someone else. All right, I'll clear them out. And you'll help me then? I'm sure you mean well, kid. But even if you succeeded, more would move in soon. You'll probably just get yourself killed in the process. Well, it's worth a shot. You got nothing to lose. You're either crazy or desperate. But do it. If you survive, come back. And we'll talk. Hey, it's me. The infected are gone. For now. You've slain them? All of them? All of them. So you have. Fine, then. I will tell you of your friend. He was surprised by masked men. He couldn't even put up much of a fight. They just overwhelmed him and dragged him into a nearby building. Is it inhabited? I don't believe so. Except for the infected, of course. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. You may have saved a life today. And you have provided my family a respite from constant terror. Even if it lasts only for one night, we will be eternally grateful. Looks like you carriers are as reliable as your reputation. Or should I say, predictable? I predict I'm gonna beat your ass. You're having a party and you didn't invite me. I'm hurt. What the? Derek, the prodigal carrier. So you are behind this after all. What are you talking about? I'm here to save your ass. Save your own ass. Kill them both, boys. <laughs> Thanks. Looks like I misjudged you. Same as everyone else. But, um... I told you I'd have my eye on you, Pilgrim. And I have. Especially since our first meeting. You're good. But when I saw you walking into a trap, I stepped in. I told you I'd be there when you slipped up. I, I guess I took it the wrong way. Okay. So you're not the one hunting down carriers. 
No, but I've been investigating. I've concluded it's someone on the inside. Fuck. Any idea who? I have my suspicions, but for now, I'm going after Jack. But you were following him too? Yeah, but I lost him after he was dragged in here, and then you showed up. He can't be far. Call in all carriers. HQ is under attack. Nearby carrier to HQ immediately. We need help! Oh, fuck. That's Driscoll. We gotta get back to HQ. Let's divide and conquer. You head to HQ and I'll find Jack. Okay, uh, radio in when you find him. I'm heading to HQ. Watch yourself, Pilgrim. And good luck. Welcome to the Dead Letter Office, punk. Good thing you showed up when you did. Oh, if it weren't for Derek, I wouldn't have made it at all. Derek? But I thought... Yeah, so did I. But turns out all he wants is to come back to the guild. And killing carriers isn't the way to do it. Then who's behind all this? Well, Derek believes it's someone on the inside. I agree. Yeah, I find that hard to believe. Driscoll, you gotta come see this.
behind me. I, I can't believe it. He had to be working for someone. He couldn't pull this off on his own. With personalities like Jack and Derek around, his nice guy routine kept him off everyone's radar. Ethan, it's Derek. I found Jack. He's dead. Now his killers are too, but I beat a confession from one of them before finishing him off. And what did you learn? Jaime was working for Waltz. Waltz is behind this? Waltz? I didn't see that coming. Thanks, Derek. Gather Jack's things if you can. I'll be in touch. Roger that, Pilgrim. So what is Waltz after? Destroying the carriers to disrupt the network? Waltz isn't a destroyer. He wants to control the network. He wants our archives all to himself. I've heard about the carrier's Bible. Is there more? A lot more. Maps, other books. Vast quantities of intel gathered over the years. Every little detail about the city and the surrounding areas as well. And Waltz is no doubt trying to gather complete information about the city. Maybe about its citizens. He's looking for something and I need to know what. I need to see the archives. That's information reserved for only the highest ranks of the Carrier's Guild. However, you've more than proven yourself. Earned your place among our elite Carriers. Come on. Your time has come, Hotshot. Welcome to the top tier of the Carrier's Guild ranks. Not bad for a pilgrim. You are, officially, the elite of the elite. The best of the best of the very best of the guild. Our secrets are now your secrets. To honor this occasion, I have something for you. Congratulations, Hotshot. And to think what you were when you joined. Some snotty-nosed little punk. And what you are now, a carrier. Makes me proud. With your fearless dedication and service, you've earned the right to ask of the rest of us how we can serve you. You get one favor, so ask away and make it good, Hotshot. I asked that Derek be reinstated as a carrier. He saved my life and even as an outcast had this guild's back. He admits to his mistakes and I believe he'll work hard to make up for him. Well, if you say so, I'll believe you. We'll restore Derek immediately. Thank you. From now on, treat me like an open book. There is probably a great deal that you'd like to know. One answer's hot shot. Now's your chance to ask. Meet me in the canteen. If I really am to thank you, I want to date in person. A question for you, Professor. Ask away. I'm looking for a girl named Mia. She'd be about my age now. <laughs> a little younger. Do you know anything about her? No, I'm afraid not. Anything else you can tell me about her? Yeah, she was one of Waltz's experimental subjects. No, one of his victims. Fifteen years ago. There were more girls. The carriers know of one of them. It was hard to keep that one out of trouble. <laughs> Sounds like it could be her. Maybe. But I wouldn't get your hopes up. She goes by the name of Luan. She hangs out with Frank, as far as I know. Oh, I see. Uh, thank you. Can you tell me any more about Major Matt? Before the revolution, Jack Matt was an undistinguished military major. He made his name by refusing William's order to shoot civilians. 
He managed to get most rank and file soldiers to join him and side him with the people and help in their revolution succeed. He's considered by many as not just a hero, but the city's saviour. That was then. Now, I hear, he's more and more after personal gain and to help the citizens. That sounds like he's on a power trip. It's too bad. So, what about this Rainer character? Character's right. He's responsible for bringing together all the trade unions necessary to get the wall built. This had him mixing with nearly everyone in the city, both the bigwigs and everyday people. He leveraged his role to make himself very, very rich. Which made him an unlikely revolutionary leader, but he became one nonetheless. He was ground zero for the rebellion. Although his true motivations have never quite been clear. He came out on top in any case, and manages the supply chain for the peacekeepers. He's up there with Martin influence. He's got exquisite taste, and in the course of his duties, manages to obtain all manner of rare artifacts his people come across. Well, he's become quite the collector. Hmm, sounds like a colorful individual. So, what's the real story on the Night Runners? Who were they? Heroes to most. Started out pretty simple, a group of soldiers who became infected during a mission. Now, usually, infection spelled the end of a military career. Too much risk, especially with so many night operations. However, around this time, the military created something called inhibitors. Not only did they prolong the time you could spend in the dark, but also greatly enhanced motor skills and other senses. The downside was the side effects of inhibitors. They kicked the crap out of most people if they didn't outright kill you. Given a choice, most soldiers took the risk to remain in active duty and to continue to make a difference in the battle. That's why people consider them heroes. Not just because they did so much to help so many, but because they joined the revolution on the people's behalf. They were the real deal, Aiden. That's quite a story. Can you tell me anything about X-13? X-13? Interesting. Not quite, but listen to this. Back in the day, the military coded strategic locations around the city with an X and a number. This included sites like water towers, power stations. The higher the number, the more strategically important the location. But I've never heard of any location with a higher designation than X-9. So, what's strategically important about X-13? Have no idea. But I'll tell you, it's not a place for guys like you and me, lad. Hmm. I wonder what it means, then. So who's this Colonel Williams? Oh, yes. Colonel Chris Williams, a.k.a. The Butcher. Ooh, how do you earn that nickname? If you hadn't just asked me, I'd say you don't want to know. But since you asked, Williams was the right-hand man of General Pratt, the nominal head of security for the city. I say nominal because it was an open secret that Williams was Pratt's puppet master. Pratt was a nepotism promotion and of no practical military use. Growing bold, Williams ordered a chemical strike on the city while Pratt was stuck at the bottom of a whiskey bottle, unable to cope with the conflict, the responsibility of military command, and really, well, anything not whiskey-related. What happened next is common knowledge. William's attack triggered the revolution. With Pratt having abdicated all authority, Williams ordered the military to shoot civilians. Most of the soldiers refused his order, and the end of armed conflict came swiftly. But not before the Colonel and many of his supporters made the dam his personal stronghold. Shortly after that, lucky for him, he took in Waltz. Wow, the butcher indeed. Thanks for the information. So what really brought on the revolution? It had been building for a while. Under William's direction, the military was increasingly unconcerned with collateral damage or civilian fatalities. The chemical strike was the match that lit the bonfire. 
The military explanation for the chemical strike was to eliminate the infected in evacuated areas of the city. Fact is, most areas had not been evacuated. Crowds of survivors remained, huddled on roofs, sheltering in place. Citizens, but also undocumented refugees from all over Europe. There was no way to know who was healthy and who was infected. There was a massacre, and half the city's population was wiped out. Oh, my God. It was a tragedy beyond comprehension. Was Williams that bloodthirsty and cruel? Was the military that disorganized that it didn't know its own evacuation plans? In the end, it doesn't really matter. Death and chaos enveloped the city, and those who survived had had enough. And so, as people have done throughout the ages, they rose up in revolution. Huh. I hardly know what to say. Well, this has been quite an education. Thanks, Professor. No problem, kiddo. Wish more of my carriers were as curious as you. It's our new pop god. Welcome back, Aiden. Yeah. Matt won't give us that. It's yeah, a crowded place these days. And I'm shopping. gonna drop a I have big a feeling habit. The same Good seeing you. This river is green. <laughs> the red you don't. And then here. Nice color. Thanks, Aiden. You don't know what being back in the guild means to me. Don't thank me. You proved yourself. Maybe, but you made it happen. Here, take this. What's that? Eh, a little toy I whipped up for myself. I want you to have it. I call it Deliverance, and it's yours. Holy shit. Look at this. Thanks, man. Use it in good health, or I'll find your corpse and steal it back, Pilt. Aiden. Roger that. You take care, Derek. <laughs> 